What is up, Depthians? We're going to be showing off a brand new tool coming to From the Depths. So, what is this tool and why are we doing it in this format and not the usual screenshots and walls of text? Well, there's going to be a bit of information that needs to be sort of like explained properly and taking screenshots and scribbling all over them is just going to be a little bit confusing. So, what this tool is, is a shell debug tool tool which pretty much is going to be showing you what our shells are doing how they are interacting with what they are hitting okay so the following is going to be the same for crams missiles torpedoes and as you can see in front of us is aps which i'm going to be showing you what this tool does who rated in so in order to get this thing to work the first thing that you will need is your test subject your test subject is going to be the thing that you're going to be recording and logging the damage on the thing that you want to see your shells interacting with so it could be various different types of armor setups and all of that good stuff so when you have that smash your v button and go to the damage and debugging tab and <laughs> <laughs> that is absolutely new to me. I'm going to have to see what the hell that is uh, after I explain all of this and then show you good people what that does. So, over here what we have is, um, these are all going to be turned off by default, okay? And what we have here is, it's going to tell us the kinetic path that your shell took. It's going to show you the Hessian heat effects and explosion release points. So, if it's a pen depth fuse and it hit its pen depth limit that you set it to it's going to show you where it hit that pen depth uh, it's going to tell you either if it hit the pen depth or if it actually just ran out of kinetic energy and exploded and where it exploded down here is going to show us the explosion effect so this is your pure um, explosive um, damage uh, melee and thump effects as well and the EMP so the where the EMP traveled to and from and its damage and all of that good stuff down here if you do have a crap load of stuff that you have logged you can pretty much just come here cl click clear all and that will all go poof away very good okay so our test subject is a shoebox full of one by one meter blocks and just something there for shells to interact with over here we have a couple of shells. Don't think we need to go through them all, uh, just to show you guys the different um, sort of icons and symbols and things for you to interact with to see what is going on with your shells. So down here we have our first shell, which is a 500 gauge. Yes, this has also been tuned up quite a bit as well. Um, we have, you know, a 500 millimeter EMP pen depth uh, shell set to penetrate nine meters and then detonate the EMP or in this in this letting off its EMP charge and I'll set this to 30 just to make sure that uh, it does not interfere with anything so that's our first shell let's pop over here smack the button pay no attention to that because this is my debugging build and we have a couple of things other things being logged okay then so over here what is happening is this our uh, shell as it's on an EM, uh, as it's an AP shell, it travelled through all of this before it detonated. So what we are seeing over here is uh, it penetrated the shell, uh, it penetrated the block. As you can see there, it totally killed it from 350 to zero health. It is showing you how much kinetic damage there is left on this shell and the speed that this shell has. So if we move over one more meter, you'll see that the kinetic damage has gone down, the speed has also gone down, and how much pen depth um it has traveled you know to so far so then over here what we have is this so our shell we had set it to nine meter pen depth there that meaning that you know when it kills its ninth block or its ninth meter to then detonate or in this in this one just let out the emp and that is what we're seeing here so if our shell had run out of kinetic energy before it hit or before it killed off its ninth meter, you would see here that instead of penetration depth fuse, you would see it ran out of kinetic energy. So this thing, it hit and killed its ninth meter. So as soon as it hit and killed its ninth meter, that would be right on this edge here of the ninth meter block, it detonated or it released its EMP charge. 
and down here in cyan is that EMP charged, where it started, where it finished. So you can see these are all one by one meter blocks. And this one here, as you can see, the wireframe is telling you that this is a four meter block and what damage it has done to this heavy armor block, which is it took it from 6,000 down to 10 health and with no more EMP left for it to travel to do more damage to other things. Okay, so going a little bit off topic here, let us see, you know, um, how it's going to mark, you know, two or three different uh, hits. So let us bring out a search protector and put it here. So now we have a search protector over here. Let's come out of build mode. Let us repair. Repair all like a so. Smash this once again, and as you can see, you know, the EMP has acted differently because of our search protect protector, and therefore the EMP has traveled, you know, taking uh, the shortest distance towards this heavy armor block because it's like a magnet for EMP, pretty much. It's it just loves EMP, it tells the EMP, please come and hit me, and that's what it did. It took the shortest route, and so like that, as you can see, you know, we are recording two uh, hits here. And you can get rid of one by right or everything. So if I just wanted to get rid of the cyan, I'm going to left click there. And it got rid of that second hit. And if I want to get rid of pretty much everything, I can just right mouse like that on one of the, the paths. Uh, the shell took. Right then, so next shell we have our pen depth frags. Now frags, well not the frags itself, but the UI and how we um, change the cone angle of the frags has changed pretty much. Uh, all we have now is just one slider here. This one slider is affecting all of our frag warheads on this shell. Uh, apart from that, everything is the same. We still have a 9 meter pen depth and we still have the surface time of 30 seconds here like so so let's get this thing in our shoe box like that okay so let us see what is all of this noise on our screen as you can see like before we have where our shell traveled you know through how much kinetic and all of that that has left why it detonated detonated because of the penetration depth fuse and all of this white and pink noise in here so this is telling us, you know, where this particular fragment traveled to and from. So this particular fragment over here killed part of an engine block, or well, part of the engine setup from block health 100 to 0. How much kinetic this fragment has left and the speed that this fragment also has left. So each and every one of these have, it's telling you what this fragment has left in terms of kinetic damage. So this one traveled through here, it hit this block, it killed it, it hit something else and killed it that had 200 health, hit another one that had 150 health, and so on and so forth, hit something else, killed it as well, look at, still has about 7k of kinetic damage left, it hit a metal block and killed it, and it still has 2,000 <laughs> kinetic damage left, and that is where it stopped. It stopped on another metal block there. So the block there was hit for 350 and it took it down to 131. And that is where that little, that little fragment ended up. So that went through pretty much 4.73 meters of stuff. Let's just say stuff. Parts, e engine parts pretty much and killed one metal block. Now down here, as I was saying, you know, we do have these ricochets. These ricochets are as follows. So this, a fragment hit here, hit here. I don't know which fragment it is though, but I know a fragment hit a block here and it ricocheted, ricocheted probably to this one over here. And that also killed the block. The block there had 150 health. And it took it down to zero. Um, so I'm assuming that that block was already hit by something else. And this fragment here just kill, killed it off. This ricochet, I should say, killed it off. Like that. So that is fragments and ricochet. Okay, so next up we have some penetrate, penetration and explosive. 
So this is going to pin 9 and then it's going to detonate just some explosive warheads. Let's come over to here. It is loaded. Yes, it is. Very good. Hit that. And now you see we have a different, you know, some different things on screen. All right, then. So what has happened here? Well, we have the same, same old um, green line telling us, you know, our kinetic damage, where our shell penetrated and all of that good stuff. Then we have these black and red wireframe boxes. The black wireframe boxes are telling us that it's only just damaged by explosive damage and the red ones are telling us well these were outright killed by explosive damage and over here it's a little bit hard to see we have another little x so this is where our shell detonated due to penetration depth fuse and this is the he trigger point itself this is where the the whole aoe started from and that was at 8,500 damage with a 15 meter radius. So what has happened here is the shell penetrated, detonated, the explosive damage, all right, took out everything in this room and it also traveled back through our little hole here that we made with our uh, AP shell, which is pretty damn awesome and also damaged a block down here. So next up on the list we have a shape charged, shape charged head, as you can see here, propellant amount, uh, the special factor is maxed out, just like me, it's absolutely and utterly special, and all of that good stuff. And yeah, that would be 500, just to give you guys an idea of what's happening there. Good stuff indeed, let us make sure the shell is reloaded properly, very good. Smack that button, and let's go and see what all of this noise means. Okay, so what has happened here? Well. As you can see, we have our new little black X like we had in our previous example. The usual little red one telling us what happened to the actual shell, why it detonated. Then this is telling us where the HE trigger point was and how much damage and its radius. So with heat, it has a jet which passes through a number of metal blocks. And as you can see here, it's starting off with 51.7 and each one we go through is getting less and less and less so that traveled all the way through until it hit this room here where it found an exhaust pipe over here and between that exhaust pipe was a little bit of an air gap and that is why this thing popped and let out all of its frags in one go and it's pretty much just like our ap fragment um, shell as you can see it has a start penetration point and where it ended up and everything that else had done in between we also have the same again with our ricochets you know where it bounced to and all of that good stuff as well so hopefully that explains that one pretty damn simple okay so skipping the second uh heat and secondary heat uh warhead there because it's going to be exactly the same as the previous example we're going to be now looking at the squash head and as you can see, a special factor is maxed out, just like me. Absolutely, utterly special. Um, making sure we have that shell loaded. Smash that button and see what has happened. Okay, so what has happened over here? So as you can see, we have these new pink wireframe boxes and we have this uh, grayish wireframe box. So this grayish wireframe box, what I'm saying is that is just thump and melee damage. The block there was not killed. Um, that's why it's in gray. However, over here we have a pinky one, a nice pinky box. And that is saying, if I can select it properly, like so, and that is saying thump and melee damage, it took the block down from 350 to zero health. So that means that it killed the block and that is why it's in pink not gray and these two are sharing the same we killed a block because the block was literally destroyed there so we have some explosive damage and we also have the thump melee damage they're both pointing towards a block that was killed therefore they're both saying well i killed it pretty much and that is that so that is the new sort of uh, thing there over here we have the same thing once again we have the he trigger point APS detonation trigger position and then we now have this hash trigger point and direction so where this traveled to so if this hit a slope it would have probably gone into a different direction 
but we're just here you know, to tell you guys, you know, what all these bits and pieces, what they mean. So if we follow the blue line, as you can see here, it's not going to change. It's going to stay at 40. That's how, you know, the hash works. And it came out here. Once again, just like our previous um, shell, found that little bit of air between between the block and that exhaust pipe that was there. Releasing off its balls, spools, and they work pretty much exactly the same as our frag and as the jet fragments do as well. So telling you what it hit, what it killed, and where it stopped. You read then, so yes, if you did have a shell which had two different things on, like this one, for example, we have hash and heat, okay? And it's absolutely special, just like me. If we smash that button, they are. It is going to show you both of them. It's going to show both damage types. It's going to show you where your heat passed from, where your hash passed from, and the usual fragment direction, and what they hit, what they killed, where they stopped. Who right then, so it brings us to the last bit of beeswax. As you can see, we have our beautiful, awesome, awesome one, one hit kill all turret here. Nice rotating free as a bird and all of that good stuff until some idiot like me comes along and says, oh yeah, well, I want to build some armor around it now. And you go in and, you know, you put, you put down your stuff, your stuff like this, perhaps, for example and all of that and i don't know misclick there and all that good stuff and you're like oh geez why why, why you know want to work these turret why, why you do this to me and then you go into build mode so obviously you know you have your record turret spinner overlap thingy ticked on and um, yeah and you can see you know what is the culprit and why and i'm building on the turret like an idiot there you go no nope, that wrong thing once again Come over here, get rid of that, as you can see, go back into build mode, and you're like, ah, well, not into build mode, go back to control your turret, and it will show you once again, you know, what else is stopping it. So it's going to record them one at a time, so every time it can't move, it's going to say, oh, why can't I move now? So it's not uh, going to mark them all in one go, at least for now, that's how it is. Um, like I said, this is a work in progress, and I'm giving you a sneak peek of it. So, yeah, as you can see there, you know, it rotated a teeny tiny bit, but then got stuck. And it's showing you on the turret block itself, um, you know, if it's, if it's, if you wanted to remove a block from the turret to have this thing rotate, or the thing on the hull that is causing it to stop. So just come back in and get rid of that. And there you go. And it is working, working all nice. A sweet little addition there. Very, very good. Okay, so that brings us to a little round of what is happening at Brilliance, guys, for the, this month and perhaps next month, well, the coming weeks and all of that good stuff. Hello, go away. Um, what is happening is as follows. Well, Nick is currently focusing a lot on bug fixes. So there's going to be a lot and a lot of bug fixing going on rather than new additions, new features. We are still always looking at our request tracker page. So please, you know, don't forget to go there. Go and vote for, you know, any ideas that you think are awesome. Add your own as well, obviously. But for now, I don't think you're going to be seeing too many um, of the little request tags, you know, the REQ tags in the change logs. Uh, because, like I said, you know, it's going to be a lot of bug fixing. Um, we are still, obviously, working on diplomacy in the background as well. But, like I said, the main focus right now is bug fixing. Once bug fixing is sorted out to a point that we are happy with, then it's going to be going on to full-time on the diplomacy. So, that is that to be looking forward to. Uh, then there's going to be Steam network optimizations. There's some multi, this you know, pretty much multiplayer stuff. Things trying to get multiplayer to work a little bit better than it currently is. Um, after that, or well, in no particular order, but you know, this sort of idea of things, how they're going to be. Um, we well, last couple of what, a couple of weeks ago, I released, I showed a picture of a block type, and I was trying to get you people to sort of like guess what the hell it was. And yes, it is a separator block, so the separator blocks will be then worked on as well uh, by Yoris. 
And also, Drabba hopefully will be releasing some of the new Steam components. I don't think there's going to be too many Steam components, um, but numerous Steam fixes as well. So, that is sort of like rough, very, very rough news as to what is happening at Brilliant Skies. Obviously, you know, things will change, things can change, um, orders can change, you know, into which order we're going to be doing things. But that's the rough idea, that's the general idea of what we're going to be working on and all of that good stuff. So, if you have liked this sort of like um, method of... Uh, getting some news to you good people showing off some new features new functions new tools and all of that good stuff uh let me let us know in a box and down there so i can either continue doing it in this format or textual with uh, um screenshots and all of that good stuff like i used to um, try not to choose both please thank you very much <laughs> but as always you know change logs if there isn't anything like a new feature or a new tool that needs to be explained change logs they're going to be they're always going to be there and if there isn't something that needs to be explained then it's just going to be change logs really so yes hopefully you have enjoyed hopefully this tool is going to help a couple of you good peoples out uh, for those let us know as always but for now we're going to leave it here so take care and until next time